the taxes, there's laws, there's rules. You know, as long as you're following the rules, you should do what you can to, you know, maximize your tax savings within the rules. That's your right as an American. This is Right About Now with Ryan Alford, a Radcast Network production. We are the number one business show on the planet with over 1 million downloads a month. Taking the BS out of business for over six years in over 400 episodes. You ready to start snapping necks and cashing checks? Well, it starts right about now. What's up, guys? Welcome to Right About Now. We're always bringing you what's right, and it's always topically right now. Hey, we got a topic today. You know, we all wish we didn't have to think about it, but look, this is what we do on the show. It may be a topic that you don't always want to think about, but we're going to bring you the best, the brightest, and the info that you need to do it the best way possible. That's why we've got Ryan Moriarty. He's the president of DoneForYouTax.com. What's up, Ryan? Yes, sir. How you doing, Ryan? I'm good, man. I uh, I got to be honest. You know, we're recording this on a Monday, and I'm like, taxes. Oh man. But then I'm like, <laughs> wait, no. Ryan is telling people we're, we're bringing we're bringing the good to people, like how to get it done the right way, yeah. the most inexpensive way possible. So. Hey, we got to bring the message to the people one way or another. Well, they say death and taxes. You got to count on both of them. I'm definitely a good business in terms of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, should be a good, uh, what do they say? Uh, longevity. And, uh, you know, you always have somebody needing your services. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Ryan, I know, uh, I guess we're, we're in Puerto Rico today. Congratulations on having the better weather for probably 98% of anyone listening. <laughs> yeah, it's good down here. Yeah, man. Uh, how's life treating you? Oh, it's great, man. I'm, I'm, I'm super blessed down here. Uh, I got my, uh, my, my daughter and my, my girlfriend, my family down here. I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, you know, we got our, we got our little swimming pool outside and, uh, we got a bunch of tennis courts, uh, right near the house. So I'm happy, man. I'm happy. Hey, living a dream. I love yeah, it. Absolutely. I love it. I, uh, how long have we been doing the tax thing? Has it been a lifelong, you know, accounting thing? No, no. So my background is actually uh, computer science. So I have a doctorate in computer science, um, and I've been a tech business owner for 15 years. So that feels like that's been a lifelong thing. Um, I started this accounting company four years ago. Um, you know, uh, it was actually my, my girlfriend. She... I uh, needed some help with her taxes and um, she's a travel nurse, right? She, so she had a W-2 and she also did some part-time 1099 work. And uh, so she didn't know she could write stuff off for her 1099 business. I helped her with that. She posted about it on Facebook and like 30 people wrote to her looking for help. And I was like, oh man, we got to sell these people accounting services. So I hit up my CPA and I was like, hey, you know, if, if I do um, sales and uh, customer management, will you do fulfillment? He said yes. And, and then, you know, from there, Second year, we brought it in house. Third year, we started building software, uh, my background software. And we've like really been able to, uh, I mean, just kind of just make it super efficient, make it super affordable for something that generally, you know, wasn't that affordable before. So, yeah. You know, it's taxes are an interesting thing. <laughs> like <laughs> it's yeah. uh, in more ways than one. I yeah. mean, you know, presidencies are sometimes won and lost over it. Uh, people, lots of divorces, lots of, uh, you know, all kinds of things. You've got fraud, you've got uh, a million different layers to, to taxation and mm -hmm. what it's for. I don't know that we all want sort of the benefits that come from, you know, an organized society, maybe the, for what taxes are supposed to pay for, but nobody really wants to pay uh, ultimately because you work hard for your money, right? Yeah. And then you got to, and then it goes out the other end. <laughs> no, exactly. exactly. But yeah, I mean, listen, we, we should all be the, the taxes. There's laws, there's rules. You know, as long as you're following the rules, you should do what you can to you know maximize your tax savings within the rules. That's your right as an American. I wonder what, you know, if you think about like the scale of both lack of knowledge and sort of trepidation and fear, like where taxes fall. It, it's yeah, got to be no, pretty high, right? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of people who are are very nervous. You know, there's a lot of people who come to me and they haven't done it in a long time. And they're just like, man, I just didn't want to touch it. You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. But it, but you have to, and I think that's why I was excited. You know, like okay, yeah, empowering people is what 
ultimately we're trying with knowledge and the more people know and they understand and the more outlets they have for services that they can benefit from. Yeah. That's where I think, you know, we're doing our job and trying to sort of take the message to the people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, the people that should hear this message, you know, are generally like who we like to work with. It's small. I call it very small business. So businesses making around 600,000 a year and under. Right. So it's, it's the, you know, it's the guy behind the computer. It's the insurance salesperson, you know, the, t- the person with 1099 work. Um, I get a lot of, um, you know, people doing yard work or c- construction companies. Right. So I'm working, I'm looking out for the, you know, the, the very small business person is who I'm looking out for. And, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a range, you know, that zero to 600,000 where, you know, you don't have $3,000 a year to spend on your bookkeeping, you know what I mean? And that's, you know, generally the price that you'll find if you talk, you know, you call up your local, you know, accountant or, you know, $300 a month is kind of like the standard for bookkeeping. We're doing it for, for 97 to $147 a month to any company up to $600,000 in revenue, you know? And so to be able to bring that service, um, to this kind of, it's most CPAs don't even want to work with the clients that we want, you know, which is the 600,000 and under. So, yep. what, what do you think's the most, like, I want to get into your service some here in a bit, but let, what's, yeah. what's like one of maybe the biggest for that demo of small business mm-hmm. when you work with them and what you've learned, maybe like, what's like, the biggest things that they're either missing or don't know or yeah. misconception in that sort of sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would say like if whenever I get someone who's new to business on the phone, you know, or, or, or I talk to someone, you know, my number one piece of advice is, um, is really to get your bookkeeping together. Right. And my joke about this is people call me all the time with back taxes, but no one ever calls me with finished bookkeeping and back taxes. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. As long as you get your bookkeeping done, the tax filing part, that's easy. You know, that'll, that'll get done, you know? And so the, I think like um, people are like, oh, this, you know, it's going to be really hard. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's not, you just, the one piece you got to take care of is the bookkeeping. If you take care of your bookkeeping, the rest will fall into place. No problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could speak to that. You know, I've been an entrepreneur for seven plus years, not my entire career. I've worked for others for like 15 yeah. And my dad was in small business. And so he counseled me. But what I could tell you, though, because I've had friends and watched it, it's really easy to get behind if you don't yeah. prioritize and get it. Like you said, it's it's just a book. You get behind the bookkeeping, you know? It's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, it, and even if you're not trying to, again, do anything wrong, it's one of yeah. those things that should, should be like core learning. So like any one of our listeners, if you're starting a new business, you're thinking about it or, mm-hmm. you know, you're in software, like, again, like you said, behind the computer doing uh, yeah, coaching. Or, yeah, coaching. Absolutely. Yeah, that's sort of thing. I, you start income starts coming in, but you need to be sort of <laughs> managing the trail of all of that in the right way. Correct. That's the thing, but like, it's, that's not, not only is that what you should be doing, that's all you have to do, right? It's not, there's people think that there's all these things, you know, you have to do. Even if you don't set up an LLC, you know, you'll have a sole proprietorship, nothing will happen. If you're making money, the only thing you need to do to not get behind on your taxes, to not feel like you're overwhelmed, is just to get your bookkeeping done. And if you get your bookkeeping done, all the other administrative stuff will fall into place. What's been, what's some of the biggest changes? I mean, have there been changes in, you know, like, I don't know, from either the technology, the laws themselves, or other things yeah. that have sort of guided the whole industry? Yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think one thing that's really cool right now about the industry is the, the what technology can do to it and what it is doing to it. You know, I, I don't see that many other firms like us who are really like developing software and then passing, a lot of people are developing software, but then they're still charging the same amount. So we're developing software, we're passing those savings on to the client. 
Right. And so if you look at, remember the first year we were, we were just doing, like I said, my CPA was just fulfilling. Right. And if you look at the amount of work that we had to do for one client from that first year to where we are now, it's about 95% less work. Right. Originally, we were collecting all the information through emails. We were collecting all the bank statements through emails so that we could do the, you know, so that we could actually do the, the bookkeeping and the tax filing. Now we have an online portal. You go there, you connect your bank accounts using Plaid. It allows us to automatically download the transactions and literally download the transactions daily so we can just do the bookkeeping for you. You know, and then all the other information we need to collect for taxes. Again, we have an online portal. So you just enter it in there. We'll tell you if it's, you know, the, the computer will let you know if it's off or what we need or extra things we need. And so to go from where we were, even at, even us as a company, where we started just like a normal accounting firm to what now is a software powered accounting firm, like not yet. Yeah, I would say 95% of the work, we, there's about... 95% less work per client. That's, that's true. How does AI, you know, get involved as far as yeah. taxes go? That was fascinating to me. You know, I, yeah. think I see that mm -hmm. on all, almost everything now. You've got AI involved and helping in some yeah. way. Uh, what no, about totally. taxes? Yeah. So, I mean, so for the bookkeeping, it helps lower the cost, right? So, you know, if, um, if we were just to get, so have someone go connect their bank accounts, we got their transactions, say we're doing 2023. So we have all the 2023 transactions, you know, without, without AI, without the computer, um, our bookkeeper is going to have to go through and manually class, click, click on all 1000 of those transactions and classify them. Right. But what we have now with the software and with the AI is before the bookkeeper even touches it, the computer does a run at it and the computer will get it like 80, 85 percent of the way correct. And so now the bookkeeper is only working on the, the final 15 percent just to kind of clean up the final 15 percent. The rest we know is right because, you know, the computer did it right. So we're, we're looking at like, you know, an hour or two or three of time from the bookkeeper versus before we we're talking like eight hours to do to do a set of bookkeeping. So it's just really like, it just really minimizes the time, you know, allows us, like I said, like other people, they may not pass on the savings to you, but our company passes on that savings to you um, so that, you know, you can, you can actually get it done for a reasonable price, which is really important for these small businesses. Yep. How much of it's, you know, you're done for you tax.com. So yeah. is yeah. it uh how involved is the business owner have to be yeah. in this? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I mean, they, I would say the answer to that is as little as they can be, but that's not necessarily no work. You know what I mean? We do as much as we can for you, but that doesn't mean you're not going to have any work, right? So in, in terms of the book, Bookkeeping, you got to connect to your accounts. You know, we don't know your bank logins, right? So you got you to connect your accounts yourself through Plaid. Um, once we download it, we do the first draft. We turn that around in 24 hours, and then you meet with us on the phone. Now, the reason you meet with us on the phone is because there's stuff you know that we could never know just from looking at the books. We need to know, you know, um, was this meal at a, you know Cheesecake Factory? Was that a business expense or was that a personal expense? You know that we don't. So there's a there's a you know there's for things like that that could go either way. We want to talk to you on the phone and figure out exactly what we need to do. So now you're just having a half an hour, you know, maybe, maybe two or three of those phone calls, an hour and a half total. Um, and so it's not that much work. You know, you're working with somebody, you're talking with somebody, we've allotted time for the meeting. So it's you know, kind of structured for you, but that's, that's what we need to get the bookkeeping done. And then, you know, going forward, it's really automated in terms of like keeping it up. Now, in terms of uh, tax preparation, the biggest thing for tax preparation, we just need the information, right? You have all your 1099 forms, you have your 1098s, maybe you have a 1095, which is, you know, health insurance, right? We need to get all those forms. We need to know what your address is. We need to know, um, you know, your name. We need to know your dependents. That's all information that we need. So you have to enter in all that information. So maybe that's an hour or two, but once we have that information, we'll go through and we'll produce the return for you, right? And then and once the, re the return is produced, you know, it goes to our head CPA. He looks at it. You look at it. And then when everyone's in agreement, you know, we file. So, yeah. When you think about, so if I'm, I'm in the shoes of I'm playing this consumer, but, but it's, you know, the small business guy or girl. Yeah. Um, I think about taxes and I'm, you know, my trepidation, my, my fear, or like what I'm hoping I get from a service. So you are speed, you want accuracy, you want to make sure that you're doing it right. Um, what kind of protections and or service do you provide? Because inevitably, even a 
unsof- you know, not a highly, I don't know, sophisticated business, but it might be simple, can occasionally run into gray areas of not knowing what to do. So getting yeah. that kind of counsel insights, how does your company work with that when your model's sort of set up for, you know, automation quick, a lot of stuff yeah. like that? How does that one-to-one come into play? No, absolutely. Yeah, and so that's the re- like, I was talking to a, 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 you know, I was doing a sales call today and I was talking to somebody and um, I was saying that, you know, any kind of question you may have about, oh, what about this off case or what about this off case? That's why you get on the phone with the bookkeeper one-on-one for those meetings, right? That way you're able to ask the question. The, the bookkeeper is able to dig down to get all the information they need so that we can classify that transaction correctly. And right? so that's and available so that's, with the service is that one-to-one. Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah, it's the way it works. Once we output the draft, you actually meet with the bookkeeper one on one on the phone until your bookkeeping, until you're 100 percent confident in the books, and we're 100 percent confident in the books. You'll meet with the bookkeeper. Yep. Yeah, yeah. What about the dreaded word that no one likes to hear? <laughs> Audit. <laughs> Audit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How yeah. or does this service help if or when that happens? And you know how how likely or unlikely is a business in sort of this stage, you know, that small business yeah. range of getting audited? Two-part question, yeah. I guess. Yeah, no, no, I'll answer the second part first. Um, you know, the generally audits for businesses this range about one in 20. So, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty low, you know, one in 20 is not very high. Um, and then, you know, how, how does the service help? How do you know, how are we there? So the biggest thing that, uh, you know, when you get audited is that you have your books together. You know, a lot of what the government's looking for is, is people who just wrote down numbers. You know what I mean? Like, oh, my, uh, my, you know, my uh, meals were about $3,000. You know, if you write down all the even numbers on your return, you're going to get audited, right? Yeah. And so the point is to have the data to back it up. And the first thing they'll ask for is they'll ask to see your books. So they'll ask to see, you know, let, let me see the transactions that, that um, you know, like, what is all this for? Here's, uh, you know, $2,000 or $2,000 in, I don't know, say, continuing education, you know, what, what, what were the transactions that these were for, right? And so by building when by building it off of you know what's true and factual, when the government asks for it, that's what you're going to show them what's true and factual, you know. Yeah. And then also like also when it goes to the CPA review when we're filing, if anything jumps out at him like oh man like you know this person spent uh, like it's a three thirty thousand dollar a year business and they have ten thousand dollars in meals and entertainment, right? That's a no go. You know, <laughs> we're going to sit down with that client. We're going to tell them, hey man, like that's a red flag. Whenever we see something that we believe will be a red flag, we bring it back to the client. We let them know the CPA has concerns. If the C- either the CPA is not going to be okay with it in any case, which happens sometimes, and he'll just refuse to sign it unless the client decides to make the changes, or we just let the client know that you know this is going to increase the probability of an audit. Um, do they still want to go ahead and the CPA is okay with it, but they don't recommend it necessarily, right? So you know that's a, that's a dialogue that we have as we're as we're processing the taxes, yeah. So it's ongoing guidance to help avoid it. Um, yeah. Do you, but you do, I'm sure, occasionally have clients that do get audited. Yeah, no, we do, we do have clients that are audited. You know, we do the best to support them. Usually, so it's what they, they call like a desk audit, right? And so they'll write, and you're not, your whole return isn't going to get audited. They're going to audit one particular, generally this is the way it works. They're going to audit one particular category, you know, whether that's meals or whether that's continuing education, you know, whatever it is. And they want to see the, you know, the supporting evidence for that um you know, for that category. And if you're able to provide that quickly and you're able to provide that well and you're able to, you know, give them what they need, then it's going to end there because they see every shit together, right? Now, if you made stuff up, right, and you try to, you know, then the, you don't really have anything to show them, you know, you're, you're scrambling or it takes you a few months to do it, then that might lead to a full audit where they're going to ask about everything. Yeah. So, you, so does this payment and, you know, plan cover your clients and if they do get audited? Yeah, so we're, we're able to help them respond to messages, you know what I mean, like uh, to inquiries. We're, 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 I mean, it's basically they're asking for information, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so we're going to help our clients provide the information that they want. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, if it goes if it goes beyond that to a full audit, no, then you know they can hire the CP the CPA who signs off on their return. You know, they they are allowed to represent them in like a full audit, right? So they can hire the CPA if it, if it comes to something more serious. Yep. And 
is that that's pretty unlikely. I, I yeah, it doesn't go there that often. Doesn't go there yeah. that often. Yeah, no, yeah that's maybe. Not, that's not, that's <laughs> very, again, that's like one in twenty. But yeah. um, you know, to, when so, yeah, you have to do something. You know, kind of a little bit bad for the the government to you know get yeah. the, come after you like that. Yeah, you, you probably know have I mean? a, a red a bigger red flag somewhere uh, triggering. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's so we try to avoid red flags as much as possible. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure. How about so? Maybe we, let's add some value, Ryan. Like, what are some tips? Like, other than, hey, if we're bringing them a low cost service here. We we brought them the tip tip of the day for uh, taxes with doneforyoutax.com. But maybe some mm-hmm. practical advice for these guys as it relates to, you know, taxes and management. Obviously, starting early yeah. and you know keeping up with your books. But any kind of uh, yeah. tips and things that we could give to the audience? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So, you know, here's here's a big one is, um, you know, definitely want to have a home office. Most of my clients have a home office. Like I said, like I have a lot of like, you know, people behind the computer. They're just sitting at home behind the computer, right? So they have a home office. Um, you know, with home office, you're able to take whatever square footage that is divided by the square footage of your house. That can be a pretty significant deduction, right? And so that that's a big one. And then, um, you know, you look at cars, depending on how much you drive. So, you know, obviously, like my 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 clients doing landscaping, you know, they have much higher car deductions. Right. And so I can give some advice about the car. There's two ways to do it. Some people think, you know, you only just do miles. But if you want to do it uh, and make save more money, you, you can actually do what's called um, the percentage use, uh, the actual expense it's called. And so in the actual expense model, you add up all the costs that went into the car for the year, and then you take you know whatever percentage you drove that car estimated for, for business, right? So if you estimate that you drove that car 85% for business, or you know you track it and you actually know you drove it 85% for business, you're able to take 85% of all the expenses. Anytime you put gas in your car, whether it was for personal or business, because you're gonna take a percentage. Right. So that's, uh, that that's, that's, yep, yep, exactly. And, and if you do it the actual way, nine times out of 10, is going to be more. And you also get depreciation on your car. So you don't want to just do the miles ever, pretty much, you know, you yeah. always want to actually let, but that involves the bookkeeping. You got to do the work to count all the vehicle expenses, yeah. you know, and yeah. then, um, and then uh, tax strategy. Here's some here's some uh, tax strategy advice for you know. Let's say like your more well off clients who have I don't know maybe they have two three hundred four hundred five hundred thousand dollars in um, profit you know coming their way. And so you know the way you can kind of wipe um, wipe away your profit you know a hundred percent of the time is is investing in real estate, right? So like. Um, basically the way it works is if you do a short-term rental or you become a real estate professional, that's another conversation, but let's just say you do a short-term rental, you know, you have say a hundred thousand dollars to put down. Okay. So you're able to buy a $500,000 house. You run it out for a short-term rental. You'll be able to take five, um, 40% of that value of that house, right. And depreciate it in the very first year by doing accelerated depreciation is what it's called. So, for a five, you put a hundred thousand dollars down, you get five hundred thousand dollars house. You're off, you have to write off forty percent. That's two hundred thousand dollars. So you're able to wipe for only cash out of your pocket a hundred thousand dollars. You're able to wipe away two hundred thousand dollars in taxable income, mm-hmm. right? And, and if you're in a higher tax bracket, say let's say you're in a thirty percent tax bracket on that, that's a sixty thousand dollars tax savings. And you made an investment, which hopefully is a good investment, but I can't promise that. <laughs> <laughs> now, could that real estate be related to your business? Can it be uh, yeah. so, um, buying, yeah, so, uh, so, you know, like, let's say you're leasing currently for your business. Could you yeah. buy for your business and get kind of like a, I mean, sort of a double benefit a little bit? Yeah, yeah. So you could you could buy for your business. You could pay, you know, um, do that through an LLC. You could pay that, uh, you could pay rent. Um, there again, you, you have to be careful because again, it's that short term rental thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm hundred percent confidence in this, but essentially the way you, you know, the way in theory you could do it would be to, um, you know, rent, buy a building, rent it from your business and then depreciate the building as much as you could. Right. And so then you'd have some losses on the building. And as long as either at that point, you need to be a real estate professional. That's the thing. Cause you can do the short-term rental. Right. Um, but for real estate, if it's long-term, 
um, unless you're designated a real estate professional, which means that you're doing real estate more than any other activity, which is hard for a lot of business owners. Yeah. You know, if, if you do fall into that class, then what happens is you're able to depreciate the same amount on the house or on the, you know, say the thing you're renting, if it's a long term, but it won't count against your ordinary income. It'll just, it'll just go away. Like you'll, you'll, you'll depreciate it, but it'll just sit there for the future for that one house, unless it's a short term rental or unless you're a real estate professional. So. Got it. What's yeah. that? It's like. There are a lot of misconceptions, I think, in, in uh -huh. taxing. And I, mean, I think you brought up, you know, a couple tips with, you know, like your home office, things like that. But maybe mm -hmm. like if you have one on each side, like one that like maybe th people think always think they're going to be able to write off this, but you can't. <laughs> and maybe but the other direction, too, like they may not, you know, they no. they forget about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the number one worst deduction that I see, you know, people talking about online are these effing vehicle things, you know, people, right? Okay. Let me, let me explain why. Okay. So say you're, you buy a G wagon or whatever, you know what I mean? It's over 6,000 yeah. pounds and you can write that off. And so you write that off in the year, $150,000. You write it off, you know, 100% the very first year. Okay. That's great. Right. However, what people don't understand is that if you, first of all, you're going to lose, the, it's going to depreciate, right? Vehicles are not, a, it's not a very good investment, right? So like, you know, it's going to depreciate for sure. And then whenever you sell that car back, say you sell it for $80,000 in the future, that $150,000 you were able to get rid of now, if you sell it, that $80,000 is going to be looked at as income. There's no free money by depreciating a car. And then if you if you go out and you spend that money on a car, you're gonna, I mean, that car is gonna depreciate. You're gonna, you're not becoming any wealthier, you're becoming less wealthy. You'll have a nice car. Like, don't get me wrong, you'll have a nice car. But you'll become less wealthy if you're trying to do the trick where you're you're buying an expensive vehicle to depreciate it. You're gonna lose money. Uh. And so like if that's your goal to become more wealthy, then don't buy a nice car. Again, the real estate investment is the best investment in terms of tax benefits and and, and is also a really good investment, but I'm not a I'm not a financial planner, but you know, a Gen hey, A we are yeah. debunking viral tax myths here. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that, I've seen that one a lot. I have seen oh, that one a lot. Yeah. Over six thousand pounds, you can write it off. And yeah, it has crazy. become the sexy thing, right? Write it yeah. off, man. Just write it off, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but you have the now you have this vehicle. What like it's it, it work a uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollar car works the same as a six thousand dollar car. Obviously, there's differences, like you sure. know, so your preference or whatever. But that's going to depreciate, man. Like you're only the only money you're the only money you're able to write off in that car is what it depreciates as. Because when you sell that car back. When you sell that car back, if you depreciate 100 percent in the first year, you're paying you're paying whatever didn't depreciate. You're paying your income, so it's not like you're making any money at all. You're, you're literally just you're you're not paying taxes on the money you lose by buying a car. That's all you're doing. Yeah, I mean, if you were going <laughs> to buy that anyway, like if your lifestyle is at a level, do it. Yeah. That's what I say. When I talk to my clients about it, I'm like, listen, if you if you if you need a new car, buy a new car, but don't go out and buy a new car to save money on taxes. Because, like I said, like you're just making yourself less wealthy, and that's not the goal. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, De debunking tax myths. Uh, yeah. Any others that are as obvious as that one that are sort of like always get flaunted around is like the guru uh, yeah. stuff that isn't necessarily as true as it seems. No, there's the, the, the other now, ones. Now, the other are, way, what are things that people aren't writing off that they should be a lot of times? Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, home office, right? If you're, if you're not, you know, you, you want to make sure you add up again, home office is the same thing as the vehicle, as I was explaining before, add up all the costs of your home office, take a percentage, right? Yep. Um, vehicle, if you're just doing miles, that's a big mistake right there. Right. Um, what are some other things? Uh, you know, I mean, I, meals. So, you know, what, what meals can you write off? Right. Like, so even if, even if you're going to dinner with your wife, if you talk about business, if you, she's like an advisor and it's something you actually discuss, if you discuss business, you can write off that meal. So meals, as long as there's a business purpose for the meal, as long as you have some, you know, as long as you're talking some business and you know, there is a business purpose for it, those are deductible. So sometimes people feel a little weird about writing off meals, you know, with their, with their spouse. But if you're talking business, you're talking business and, and that, that becomes deductible.
I don't know a bit. I don't know a, a single meal. My wife and I don't talk about something to do with business. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because I write every one of them off. I write a lot of them off. I'm just saying uh, I'm, I'm creating a paper trail here of, of acknowledging what I use it for. <laughs> if nothing else, Ryan, that's what this is for. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. yeah, that and that and a uh, you know hundred fifty thousand dollar write off will uh, you know be be good for me. Uh, well, uh, uh, you're all set. And then, and then the other thing, the real estate thing with the short-term rental, that's real. So, I, you know, I, like really for anyone who has an extra $100,000 in, in income, they, especially for W-2, like W-2 people can use that as well. Most most um, tax benefits, it's only for business owners. But if, you, if you're, you know, a doctor or something, $300,000 W-2, you know, you can, real estate, if you really can save like hundreds of thousands of I mean, fifty, hundred thousand dollars on taxes. You know, that's a real one. That's a real one. So I think, yeah. Uh, I can't help but think about. He's still thinking about that. The, the, how many social media posts I saw on that car right off? Like, yeah, <laughs> that really made me think of that. It's it's it's, 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 it's yeah. I mean, but the, the, I, I said it twice. Three. I'll say it for the third time. But if you buy an expensive car like that to write it off, you're going to become less wealthy. And that is not the goal. <laughs> that is not the goal for sure. Um, what's uh, what's your thoughts? You know, you're in the software business, and yes, sir. with AI and everything like that. I mean, you know, as we're finishing up here, like I'm just curious, like how you see software being impacted with AI and like all this stuff. It just seems like yeah. we're, we're uh, at this forefront yeah. of a lot of innovation. Yeah. So, you know, it's, uh, I mean, I, I can, I like uh, maybe five, six years in the future, someone can, um, you know, just go to chat GPT and be like, build me an accounting company. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This. You know I, I don't know, man, but the future is really, I mean, I don't think we're ready for what's going to happen, you know, as, as with my background in computers and with my PhD and stuff, it's like when, when it gets to the point where AI can actually create AIs that are even better than itself. And then that thing just goes in. A, I mean, it's, it's already very, very smart. It's going to be even smarter. Um, I, I don't think there's really a way to predict what's going to happen. You know, I don't think anyone knows, you know, um, but like if you don't think that something huge is going to happen in the next five or six years, um, you know, your mistake, like, you know, there, there could be something like a 300 increase in, in GDP or 100 times increase in gross domestic product. Right. Which would be like, you know, we're just all that much more productive um, because computers are running everything. So it could be the apocalypse. You know, we have no idea. But yeah. um, to try to predict what's going to when, you know, to a point, obviously, things are going to get easier. You know, um, it's going to be easier to create businesses. It's going to be easier to create like software that's similar to mine. Right. You'd be able to do that through AI. Um, you know, to a point that's going to happen, but then at some point it's just going to, the, 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 the switch is going to be flipped and then we're going to be in a whole other reality in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, the quantum computing stuff. Like if you yeah. read enough about it, it's, it could be scary or, <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know, enlightening. <laughs> I try not to get too much of the doomsday stuff, you know. But no, it's, it's, not, it's not doomsday. It's just if you don't think there's going to be a huge change, you're, you're crazy. Because it, it, yeah. it, hopefully that change is good. You know, we hope our best that change is good. But something something in the next five or six years or, you know, even maybe even shorter, uh, the whole world's going to be a lot different than we see, we see it today. Ryan, how can everybody keep up with what you're doing, find out about your services and all that stuff? Absolutely. So probably the easiest way, you know, if you're interested in the service, you can just head to doneforyoutax.com. It's all spelled out. So D-O-N-E-F-O-R-Y-O-U-T-A-X.com. So if you just head there, on the, there's a place you can sign up for an appointment, right? Right underneath the sign up or login button, there's a, a you know contact form. You can just fill it out. We'll get on the phone and we'll figure out what's going on with you and see if we can help you out. Uh, Instagram is the other place that's a good place to connect with me, which is at Ryan J. Mo. So at R-Y-A-N, J is in John, M-O is in the first two letters of my last name, Moriarty. So right, at Ryan J. Mo is my Instagram and that's where you can find me. Ryan, really appreciate your wisdom and insight and for coming on the show. Yeah, Ryan, I appreciate your show and I appreciate what you're doing for people, man. You're awesome. 
Yeah, man. Hey, guys. Look, like we said, there's only two things you can count on. Death and taxes. They're both <laughs> coming. Hey, we live in America. It's a great place to be. We got to pay for some of this stuff. But look, here's how you do it. You got to get ahead. Knowledge is power. And ultimately, if you can save time, save money, and get a higher level of service, you need to go check out Done For Tax. Doneforyoutax.com with Ryan Moriarty. We'll see you Thank later, you. Ryan. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, brother. You, you know where to find us. Ryan is right.com. You get all the Ryans today. R-Y-A-N <laughs> is right.com. You'll find the highlight clips, the full episode of today, audio and video. Go watch that YouTube. Our numbers are going up while your taxes are going down. We'll see you next time. All right about now. This has been Right About Now with Ryan Alford, a Radcast Network production. Visit ryanisright.com for full audio and video versions of the show or to inquire about sponsorship opportunities. Thanks for listening.